National Association of Youth and Students for Peace, Pilipinas. A global family of young people building a world of peace with true love. If this is your first time visiting on our channel, make sure to hit subscribe and please turn on the notification bell to be notified for the upcoming videos. Thank you for joining us in this Regional Youth Forum. First, let me ask you this question. Have you ever thought why even though everyone desires to live in a world of peace, we are still living in a world of conflict? In this 40-minute presentation, we will study the universal principles of peace. Through this, we can attain the confidence that indeed sustainable peace is attainable. And as youth leaders, you can do your part to realize this dream of peace. Handa na ba kayo? I would like to start by sharing to you an interesting story. It is a story about a father and his five-year-old son. It was a typical Saturday morning, and this young boy wanted to play with his father. He said, Daddy, can we play? So his dad, who was busy preparing for a report that he needs to submit by his Monday morning, answered, Sorry, my son, not now. I am busy. The boy insisted, Dad, please let us play. At that point, the father noticed a world map and a scissor on top of his table. Okay, I have a great idea. So he cut the map into several pieces and gave it to his son. Hey son, this is the game. What is the game, dad? His son said excitedly. Oh, this game is called Jigsaw Puzzle. Just put the pieces back together correctly, bond them with the tape, and when you're done, Show it to me, and we will play another game. His son was so happy, and he said, okay, and went to one corner of the room. His dad was murmuring, finally, my son will not disturb me anymore. However, after five minutes, the boy went back to his daddy. Look, dad, I did it. His father cannot believe what he saw. Still shocked, he, he asked his son, Since when did you learn about geography? What? Geography, dad? So his dad asked his son, How did you do it? His son answered, I just put together the picture of the karate master at the back of the map. When the man became whole again, the world got together as well. Nang mabuo ang tao, naayos din ang mundo. So if we are to solve the problems of our nation and solve the problems of the world, let us first solve the problem in ourselves, in us, human beings. So most of you, our young participants, probably belong to the generation Z. Z as in Zoom. Before the aids of Bluetooth, augmented reality, artificial intelligence, and robotics was the aids of many scientific breakthroughs in the 20th century. The 20th century was an important century in the history of sciences and technology. From space exploration, microwave, satellites, automobiles, airplanes, submarines, from television to personal computers, x-rays, we have seen the best of men in the 20th century. However, we also have seen the worst in men, from massive poverty and hunger to drug addiction, moral degradation, and destruction of the families, religious and ethnic wars to wars among nations, pollution, climate change, racial discrimination, terrorism. The question is, what went wrong? Anyare. But despite all these critical challenges of our times, we all long for true and lasting peace, right? So we long to live in a peaceful place, 
not the peace in cemeteries where everyone there is lying peacefully, but the peace that ends all conflicts. So how are we going to realize our dream of peace? In before 1903, we could not fly. Why? Without the principles, we could not fly. Only until the Wright brothers, Orville and Wilbur, known as the fathers of modern aviation, you know, after applying successfully the principles of aerodynamics, they could build and fly the world's first successful motor-operated airplane. So we dream of flying. Yes, we see birds fly in the sky, but that's not enough. In order to fly, we needed to understand and apply the principles of what? Aerodynamics. So also, we all dream of peace. Yes, we could feel peace when we are with nature. But are this enough? No. That is why, in order to realize our dream of peace, what do we need? We need to understand and apply the principles of peace. As Lao Tzu said, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. But even though we make the first step, but we are going towards the opposite or wrong direction, we can never reach our desired destination. That is why making the right first step in the right direction is of paramount importance. I am sure that when we think about wars, we often think about soldiers, weapons, and firepower. However, as UNESCO pointed out, there is another war that we are experiencing. This is the war in our mind. In the preamble of UNESCO's constitution, we can read, since wars begins in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that defenses of peace must be constructed. That is why we are here to learn these fundamental principles of peace building and nation building. In this presentation, you will understand why these five universal principles of peace are so fundamental yet oftentimes neglected. The universal principles are applicable everywhere in whatever field of life and to all people of all different ages, culture, and nationality. These principles are applicable in the past, in the present, and in the future. So the fundamental goal of Universal Peace Federation and YSP and the lifelong mission of our founders, Dr. San Myung Moon and Dr. Hak Jahan Moon, is to realize true and sustainable peace in the society. And they have laid out these five basic principles for realizing a peaceful world. So let us talk peace. P stands for parent. So the first universal principle of peace is that God is the parent of humankind, and we are one human family. So the first principle relates to our proper understanding of God, our Creator, and our relationship to Him as human beings. So let us understand more about this principle with this illustration. So this is me. Yes, you can call me Dr. Julius or Sir Julius. You know, my siblings call me Joy. And others call me Jules, Kuya Jules. My daughter calls me Daddy. And my wife calls me Honey. Or other people call me Pre or Hoy. You know, I have many names. But I am the same person. My character is more important than my name. So when we look at God, the Creator, well, it's basically the same. Because of, you know, various languages and traditions and perceptions, we can call the Creator in many names, you know, like God, no? Jehovah, or Allah, Tao, Yahweh, El Shaddai, Divine Law, Ultimate Reality, or Dios, Bathala, Apo, Gino. Yes, we can call God with many names, but there is only one creator. Again, we have to understand that the character or the nature of God is more important than the names. 
So, and this is actually very important to understand because God is the parent of all mankind. That means that we are what? Brothers and sisters. We may worship God or the supreme being in unique ways, having different traditions and practices, but at the essence is that we are one family under one common parent. So what is important about this principle is that it brings humanity closer to each other. So we can relate to each other as a family, regardless of the color of our skin, or our language, or our nationality, or our religion, right? So this is the very reason that there are many values in the world that are applicable everywhere. As people with common origin, a common parent, we have inherent values that make us relate to each other in a common way. And these are what we call universal principles. That is why wherever you are in the world, there are certain values that are equally important to all people, like the values of compassion or kindness, peace, justice, righteousness, honesty, friendship, responsibility, truth, and true love. So the question is, you know, there are people who deny the existence of God. There are people whose mantra is to see is to believe. Are you one of these people? You know, there are many things in life that we cannot see, yet you believe that they exist. You know, just like air. You don't see air, but you can feel and sense it. So how can we perceive God who is invisible? Easy. You can perceive God's nature in the creation. And we can read this in the Bible. Ever since the creation of the world, his invisible nature, namely his eternal power and deity, has been clearly perceived in the things that have been made. So, let us understand further in this context. Okay, so I have a body which is visible, and I have also mine that is invisible, right? So, how about you? Okay. You touch yourself to check if you have body. Okay, I presume that everyone has a body. No problem. Because you can see it, you can touch it, and even you can smell it. But the next question is, do you have mine? Yes? Are you sure? So, the mind is invisible and body is visible. And this is interesting. You can actually perceive your mind or the minds of other people through their actuations. Something that you can observe, like, you know, the facial expression or the language or behavior. It is the same with perceiving, you know, the, the nature of an artist by just looking at the style of his painting. In the same manner, we can also observe the nature of the created world when you observe the created world, you can perceive the nature of God. So when we observe the created world, we can understand that there is a principle that applies to all. That all created beings have what we call dual characteristics. So first of all, all created beings have what we call internal nature and external form. When you look at man, you know, we have mind and body, right? So how about animals? They have instinct and body. Plants have response system or mechanism and body. Have you heard about sunflowers? You know, they always follow where the sun is. Some kind of an affinity to the sun. How about molecules? Well, they also follow the natural law. And they have atoms. Atoms and particles are also the same. They have internal nature and external form. So another dual characteristics is what we call having masculine and feminine aspect, like man and woman. Animals are either male or female. How about plants? Plants have male and fem female parts, like, you know, stamen and pistil. Molecules also have cation, which is positively charged, and anion, which is negatively charged. Atoms have protons and electrons. Particles have positive and negative. So what is our conclusion? Our conclusion is that, yes, we can perceive God's nature in all the things that were created. 
which all exist based on the dual characteristics. Everything has an internal nature and external form, and that everything has both masculine and feminine aspects. Based on this first universal principle, we can surmise about the fallacy of Marxism that negates the existence of an eternal and changing principle or God. And we affirm the very existence of an eternal and changing and universal principle or God. So let us continue our talk on peace. Next letter is E, which stands for existence. So the second universal principle states that we humans are what? Essentially spiritual in nature. So maybe some of you do not believe in spirits or the spirit world. You know, there are many books and movies that talks about spiritual reality, like this one's, no? Life After Life, or Light Beyond, or interesting movies like The Sixth Sense and What Dreams May Come. So now let us examine how do we pursue and attain happiness. Everybody wants to become happy, right? Meron ba sa inyo na pagkagising sa umaga at magwish ng sana maging malungkot ako ngayong araw na to? Hello? Okay ka lang? So, in order for us no, to, for, to accomplish happiness, we have to understand the needs of our mind and body. So, okay, so this is you. You have mind and body. So to satisfy your physical needs, you need, you long for what? Food, shelter, wealth, and comfort. Ang tawag dito ay material values. And these are needed for physical well-being. Then how about our mind? So our mind seeks something else. We call this spiritual needs. Like what? Truth that stimulates our intellectual desires. Beauty, goodness, love that stimulates our moral desires. So, when you have this, then you gain what? Inner satisfaction. So both of this, physical well-being and inner satisfaction are needed in order to experience true and lasting happiness. But what is the problem? Most of the time, we just focus on the desires of the body and neglect what? The desires of our mind. We neglect inner satisfaction and only concentrate on gaining physical satisfaction. So if we do this, we prioritize the desires of our body above the desires of our mind. Actually, you know, we can still attain happiness, but only temporary happiness. So when you ignore your spirit, then you become like an animal. I'll give you an example. So may isang pusa, you know, pumasok sa isang bahay, tapos may nakita siyang ulam doon sa ibabaw ng mesa. Anong gagawin ng pusa? Magpapaalam ba siya? Hindi. Sigurado kakainin ka agad yung ulam. Now, mayroong isang tao pumasok sa bahay na hindi, hindi, sa, hindi niya bahay. At may nakita rin siyang ulam sa ibabaw ng mesa. So kung yung tao na yon hindi nagpaalam at kinain yung ulam sa ibabaw ng mesa, anong tawag natin doon? So, that person also becomes like an animal. So, it is actually what? An issue of our priority. So, when you prioritize the desires of your mind above your body, then this is what? This is public-minded, and this is good. However, when you sacrifice your mind and prioritize your bodily desires, then you become what? Self-centered, and we become selfish. This is our responsibility. So that is why, you know, the growth of human character is not automatic. Yes, you know, our physical body can grow automatically according to biological law. But you know, our character, the internal aspect of the human being, do not grow automatically. So when you were born, you know, you were like this, cute, right? So you were born with the potential for love. So, but that love is like a plan that means we need to nurture and cultivate. That means we need to make what we call efforts. And then you become what? You become mature and then you realize your potential for love. So you are responsible for your own moral development. 
to achieve our full potential, we must actively take responsibility for the growth and development of our character and heart. So our conclusion, foremost, humans are what? Spirit beings before we are physical beings. We are a spiritual being with a body, not a body with a spirit. So this brings us to another fallacy of Marxism that negates the existence of the human spirit. You know, our existence is essentially spiritual in nature and way more than just mere material existence. We are a spirit with a body. So next letter is letter A, which stands for altruism. So the third universal principle of peace is that God's ideal is what? Living for the sake of others. So this is the fundamental principle of relationship, that all created beings are governed by this principle of living for the sake of others or for the sake of the whole. So from, you know, the smallest creation, like the atom, to the largest creation, like the solar system, there is one principle that governs them. And we can observe the principle of living for the sake of others in all creation. And this principle, you know, of living for the sake of others or for the sake of a higher purpose is universal for all created beings, especially for us human beings. So we were created based on these principles of being, you know, related to each other and not existing alone or independently. So we can say that the basis of our existence is through what we call reciprocal relationship or the principle of coexistence and interdependence. So I want to invite you to look closely at this photo. What do you see? You know, looks like this bird is in a life and death situation, right? Like anytime now, the crocodile will snap close its mouth and bye-bye, birdie. But no, this is actually a proper bird, bird that recognizes the invitation of this crocodile when it opens its mouth. The bird is actually eating the food that were stuck on the crocodile's teeth. The plover bird gets a meal and the crocodile gets a free dental cleaning. They are both benefited. Amazing, right? So this is the principle of creation, that nothing exists for itself, rather all for the mutual benefit of the created beings. We call this symbiosis or living together. So this is another example. This is a fish. What do you call this fish? Nemo. This is actually called a clownfish. They like to stay with sea anemones. They have symbiotic and mutualistic relationship. The sea anemone protects the anemone fish from predators as well as providing food through the scraps left from the anemone's meals. And in return, the clownfish defends the anemone from its predators and parasites. And also, the anemone also picks up from the nutrients that comes from, you know, the poo-poo of the clownfish. Amazing, right? Another example here is the hummingbirds. They have mutualistic relationship with the flowers. Both benefit. The flowers produce food or the nectar, and in the return, the hummingbirds help to move pollens for the plant to reproduce. So we have to understand that we are governed by the principle of give and receive action. This is the principle of relationship. So look at this diagram. You know, there is always what we call a higher purpose of greater value that we connect with. Then there is always a subject and object relating together in a give and receive action. Like, you know, like a reciprocal action. When there is good, give and receive action, then there is growth and there is development. Like, you know, there is internal character and external form. And there is also what? Mind. Mind is the subject and the body is the object. There is also husband and wife, parents and children, government and people, nation and citizens. In a dynamic relationship of what? Give and receive action. So we cannot deny this universal principle 
of give and receive action. Look at this, you know, plants and animals, you know, they support each other to survive. Plants give off oxygen, which the animals need in order to live, right? While, you know, the animals give off carbon dioxide, which is also needed by the plants in order to survive. So the law of nature is based on the law of cooperation. So if you deny this principle, you cannot survive. That is why selfish people are destined to perish. I'll give you an example. So when you inhale, naturally you have to exhale, right? Okay, pangatawan anong pagiging selfish? You inhale. You don't want to give. So you inhale again. Inhale. Will you survive? No. You will die if you defy the law of nature. So the law of progress in human society is based on the law of cooperation. When there is cooperation, then society can progress. So we need cooperation in all levels of relationship. Look at this. Parents and children. Parents cannot become parents without children, right? And similarly, children cannot become children without parents. Teachers need students as students need teachers. Same with employers and employees. Same with businesses and consumers. So the path of peace begins from the individual, just like the song, you know, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. So we cannot suddenly bring about peace on the earth. It must start first you know, from the individual. It must start from myself, in my family, in my community, and in my nation. So here, you know, we can see that giving and receiving action has no limits. As individual, you are part of the family. And the family is what? Part of the bigger community. And then the community is part of the nation. And the nation is what? Part of the world. That is why you should not think that I am just a person, one person. I am insignificant in this world. Just like human cells, which are important in the human body, each one of you is significant and you are all part of the greater whole. This brings us again to the conclusion of another fallacy of Marxism that reverses subject and object position and making the body above the mind. Also, the negation of the need of the principle of cooperation for growth and development. Our conclusion is that we exist based on the principle of goodness embodied in the principle of living for the sake of others. Let us go to the next letter. Letter C. C, which stands for creating good families. So the fourth principle, universal principle of peace, is that family is the school of love and peace. So the fourth principle is that world peace has its foundation in the family. You know, the family is intended to be the first school of love. It is in the family that the most basic personal and public virtues are learned. All religions of the world recognize marriage as sacred. You know, in fact, despite you know, having different cultures and rituals, all the religions of the world place a lot of importance on marriage. Strong families have served as the fundamental institution for transmitting to future generations moral strength, traditions, and values that sustain civilization. That is why the family is the natural and fundamental group unit of the society. Definitely, there is no institution on the earth that is greater than a family. As Dr. Sun Myung Moon emphasized that the family is the most important school in human life for it is the school of love. Even our constitution emphasizes that the state recognizes the family as the foundation of the nation and that marriage is an inviolable social institution. Therefore, if we are aspiring for nation building, then strengthening of marriages and families is so important. We can say that you know, regardless of nationality or culture or religion, the experience of belonging to a family is the common denominator. So when we say 
we can say that the family is the cornerstone of world peace. You know, in a typical course of our life, right, a child grows up among siblings and peers, gets married, and becomes a parent. So these are actually the basic stages we pass through in life. So we experience these four realms of love you know, in the family. First, we experience child's love, right? Then siblings or brothers and sisters' love. Then spouse or conjugal love. And then finally, parental love. So all other forms of human love are derived from these four realms of love. So as a child, what are the primary virtues that we can learn? First, as a young child, we learn to respect and obey our parents. This becomes the very foundation for a life of respect and gratitude. You know, if children grow up in a very good relationship in the family, respecting their parents, then naturally they will also grow to respect elders and authorities. Then, when a younger sibling is born in the family, we learn to adjust, we share love, and we live in harmony and cooperation, right? So if in the home, you know, brothers and sisters love and care for each other, then it's easier for them to have concern for other people. But if they fight each other in the family, then when they go out, you know, mas madali na sa kanila ang maging palaaway at basagulo. Now, how about husband and wife relationship? What are the primary virtues? We have conjugal love is built upon absolute trust, fidelity, and commitment. And then, based on that commitment of marriage, this is an important preparation for parenthood. When husband and wife love each other unconditionally, through dif even in difficult times, this deepens their capacity to love. So the fourth realm of love is parental love. This is actually the most demanding and most sacrificial of all the realms of love because it requires constant investment and sacrifice. A parent's love is unconditional, and its reward is the child's well-being and happiness. So the family, we can say, is the school where we first learn to what? To live for the sake of others. It is the school where we learn good morals, like respect. And then in the family, we learn the virtue of filial piety towards our parents, right? Then if we extend that to living for the, for the society, then we practice charity. And then when we extend that to the nation, living for the sake of the nation, then this forms what we call patriotism. So family is the school of living for the sake of others. What is filial piety? This is a very strong virtue among us Filipinos. The willingness to sacrifice for the sake of your parents and your family. That is why we can see many Filipinos who sacrifice themselves working in foreign lands, right? For the sake of their family. So filial piety is like saying, I love my parents. I will live for the sake of my parents. My parents are the best parents in the world. And if needed, I am willing to die for the sake of my parents. And based on this foundation of filial piety, we extend that to love of nation. And this forms patriotism. I love my nation. I am... I am willing to live for the sake of my nation. And if needed, I am willing to die for the sake of my nation. So we can say that the family is the school of raising patriots for the nation. Another fallacy in Marxism is their belief in the abolition of the family that views family as a means only for exploitation and private gains. This is absolutely false. The truth is that the family is the school of love and peace, and that strong marriages are the very foundation of a strong and peaceful society. So let's go to the last letter, E. E, which stands for empathy. So the fifth principle and the last universal principle of peace is that peace comes through cooperation beyond boundaries of ethnicity, religion, and nationality. So the religions of the world are like, you know, repair shops. Through the practice of our faith, we could find our way back to God. So we can see that religion is the source of humanity's deepest values and highest ideals. And through religion, you know, we can see many people who have undergone personal transformation. 
religions provide the spiritual and moral framework of the society. However, if religions or religious belief is misused for selfish gains or purpose, it can have devastating effect and it can pave the way for conflicts and block the way to peace. In fact, you know, many of the wars and conflicts happening in the world now are rooted on cultural and religious differences. So, faith and religion is not a problem. It is the selfishness and greed of people using religion and faith for their own selfish motives. So all religions seek for peace. Yes, the religions of the world may be different in terms of traditions, rituals, and doctrines. However, instead of focusing on the religious differences, we have to look at the commonality, the common values in all religions. This is the fundamental change of paradigm that we need in order to bring peace. So, what is the origin of conflict? It is the conflict within me. It is the conflict that comes from violating the basic universal principles. You know, basically, it is the problem of what? Self-centeredness or selfishness and greed. The mentality of others exist for my benefit. You know, this diminishes the value of the whole. So if, you know, people continue to live with this mindset of me first, then solutions will not be realized. So the conflict and violence that we see in the world today are actually what? Just expansions of the selfish patterns that started from where? It starts from me as an individual. Then expand this conflict in the family, conflict in the society, conflict in the nation, and eventually conflicts in the world. So the true expression of the world's genuine faith and tradition connects us to the deepest values of humankind. It is faith that can give people the power and the heart to love and forgive, to have the compassion instead of hatred, resentment, and violence. You know, the highest expression of love for others is found in the commitment to love one's enemy. Yes, we have to end the cycle of hatred, resentment, and violence. As Mahatma Gandhi interestingly said, an eye for an eye will make the world blind. Also, Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said this, we never get rid of an enemy by meeting hate with hate. We get rid of an enemy by getting rid of enmity. Yes, loving the enemy. You know, Dr. Sun Myung Moon and Dr. Hak Johan Moon, the founders of UPF, are well known for their teaching against communism. But they met with Mikhail Gorbachev in 1990 and with Kim Il-sung in 1991. It was a historic meeting, not of enemies, but of friends, of brothers who long for true and lasting peace. We learn in this fifth principle of peace that the assertion that the conflict in society is the force that drives change and development is wrong. Peace and development comes from living together harmoniously in an environment of interdependence, mutual prosperity, and universally shared values beyond ethnicity, religion, and nationality. So, let us summarize the five universal principles of peace. First, that God is the parent of humankind and we are one human family. Second, we are essentially spiritual in nature. And third, marriage is sacred institution and that the family is a school of love and peace. And fourth, God's ideal is to live for the sake of others. And fifth, peace comes through cooperation beyond the boundaries of ethnicity, religion, and nationality. I would like to end with another story behind the famous novel Peace Prize. Do you know the man behind this? Yes, it is. Alfred Nobel. So who is Alfred Nobel? Well, he was not as we know him now. He was the inventor of dynamite, which, of course, we know that these ammunitions were used to kill, to kill many people in the past. He also has built 90 armaments factory. In short, he was a notorious rich businessman. But what made him totally change? It was an incident while he was in Paris. He came upon a newspaper that gave him the shock of his life. He read an article about his death with the news headline that, re that reads, 
the merchant of death is dead. Well, he totally changed his perspective in life. He was afraid of what legacy he can leave behind when he dies. This is not what he wanted to be remembered in history. To make the long story short, he sold all his properties and assets and placed everything in a foundation to recognize people who have contributed for the betterment of humanity for the cause of peace. That foundation was the one that started the now famous Nobel Peace Prize. So, what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? Dear leaders, thank you for staying with me in this presentation. I wish you success in your endeavors. Mabuhay. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe. You can also turn on the notification bell to be notified for the upcoming videos. Join us for more adventures.